Well hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Colleen and I'm actually so delighted that you've joined me today. Um, I love to paint in watercolours. It's one of my most favourite mediums. But the trouble is one often paints so many pictures and then once you've given them away or you've decided that the exercise is done, you don't really want them. And sometimes paintings just don't work out. That's the nature of things, that there are things that are mistakes. But quite often when you're framing something, you're left with little bits and pieces that are left over. And sometimes they just have glorious colour on them. And the paper is quite nice quality. So that's one of the things that I like to use um, when I'm doing some tickets for my junk journal ephemera. The other thing is, is just to have strips of different card or paper and these I would cut out from magazines, maybe something like Daphne's Diary, just to have a nice sort of border. These you might have to mount onto card because they're slightly thinner than the watercolour paper. And this one, for instance, was just something where I'd actually hand decorated just by splattering some diluted paint onto a surface. So let's talk about what we would do in order to create some nice tickets. Oh, one of the other things that you could also use, but you might want to cut this in half, is just the wrap around from a ball of wool if you've been knitting. You could cut that into two nice strips if you wanted to do so. But I'm going to use some of this watercolour paper for now, just simply because I want to use it up. And my method for making tags is pretty easy. I've selected this long strip here. And basically what I've done is to fold that in half, then I've folded that in half again, and each half I'm folding into quarters. So we'll just repeat that. We folded it in half, now into quarters, and now each piece into half again. And when you get to the middle bits, you can just fold them over around the center like that. Um, I could have measured it all out, I could have made them my own length, but that's entirely up to you. The next thing that I will do is to grab my crocodile, and if you don't have a crocodile, don't worry about that. You can use a normal punch, but the nice thing about this is that it has two different size holes for punching. It has a large one and a smaller one, and because this is not a very wide strip, I'm going to stick with a smaller one. So the first thing I want to do is to place this so that it's halfway on the paper, and punch that through because I want to get my little circle in the middle okay like that I'm going to continue doing this all the way around uh, all the way down to the bottom because this is obviously where the tickets would actually join together make sure you've got nice folds you can always use your bone folder to do that and just make sure that you get this really nice and centered as far as possible so you're going to repeat this all the way down to the end of your strip. I'm just going to do one more here. And then in order to make your tickets look more authentic, you're going to do the edges of your ticket as well. So the end one, you're going to just take a quarter off, just to give it that sort of clipped look as if it's been torn off a roll. And then here again, you're just doing a half circle. In each of these so you've just got to get rid of the little pieces of paper that you punch out otherwise you can't see your markers so well so just make sure that you are doing that and if you just have a look at the side of the crocodile you'll see that there are a whole lot of lines here and you can use those little lines as guides so my guide is to put my piece of card up against that line before the ridges start so that's how I know that I'm getting it in the same place each time so I'm going to do this down the whole of the one side, whoopsie, and then I will do it down this side as well, all the way to the edge, whoopsie, last one going in here, all right, so this is a nice job to do in front of TV, you can sit there and quite happily do a whole load of strips and get them to this stage in order for you to be able to continue to work. The next thing is, is to actually start to put some sort of detail onto your ephemera. And I just want to clear this out the way quickly first. So I've got a clean space to work on. There we go. So when you've got your strips, you'll have a whole lot which look like this. And I'm not worried that this is slightly dirty on the one side. It's got painting on the other. It doesn't really matter. I normally at this stage would take an ink and ink up 
my surface and my method for inking up is slightly different I know I don't like getting too much ink on so I use the side of my ink pad just to actually rub the ink on and I find I don't get too much on the actual ticket which is a quite a small surface as it is so I'm going to continue to do this all the way around all my tickets you could obviously change the color of your ink depending on the style of your ticket so if I was doing something for a garden you could even go for a green kind of ink you know you don't have to stick with a brown and then I'm going to fold each ticket on the fold line and do that and just quietly get a little bit into the middle so I'm inking up all my edges before I even start to decorate all the way through this can get a little bit messy so it's always good just to have a little bit of paper towel or a wet wipe next to you while you're working try and also ink these little edges where you've taken a notch out not always the easiest thing to do but you can um, there we go so you can see by doing that already it's added some definition as opposed to that so I'm going to move on now to the next one that I've prepared and you can do a whole load of different things but let's start off with one of the simplest things so the first one that I've done is just to simply take a calendar now I found these calendars at Hobbycraft and they were really inexpensive I think they were probably about 50p or something but because they've got a lot of numbers and things on that was really nice so I've torn some of those up and just using my Elmer's glue I've stuck those down and that's just a very very basic ticket okay I haven't done much more to that so that's doing the one the next one that I did was a slightly wider one so it's got more of the ticket on its um, surface area here and then I used some of these textured stamps which I've got um, so I have a whole variety of textured stamps don't ask me for a brand I bought them in South Africa and oh, they were fairly inexpensive so this is the one that I used here and I just used some ink and just randomly popped that on just to break up the surface but they do come with a whole lot of patterns and I'm sure you could find something even if it's not a stamp to be able to do that with you could create texture so that was the next one, just creating texture with the ink around the edge, um, which I really thought came out quite nicely. The next one I added a little bit more detail. So this one we started off inking the edges, gluing the image down, putting some texture on, and then I had a different stamp that had a text on it. Now this is a also a South African make, but I'm sure you could find something similar. It's a French text, but that doesn't matter. So I've chosen the text part of this stamp set, which has really, really lovely, fine text on it. Because um, I don't want something that's too heavy, because this is quite a narrow um, little image. So I'm going to take my stamp and I put some ink on it with using my stays on pad. And I'm just gently going to press down in a couple of spots. And you'll see what happens here now is that I get that lovely fine text showing through. And I think it just adds a nice little bit of detail to that particular stamp. So you can break up the surface using other textures or you could actually use just a stamp. So the next thing that I'm going to show you is, see, get my little cover on here. Don't keep your stays on pads out in the open. You don't want them to dry out unnecessarily and the next one I'm going to show you is just a very simple one this is simply using just a piece of card with some of my hand decorated um, paper that I've cut I've inked around the edges before I stuck it down and then I have some of these little sort of floral ephemeras that I've got from a Tim Holtz woodland kit and I'm just going to glue these down this one I don't want to have a lot of ink I don't want a lot of fuss on it um, I have a garden journal that I'm working on and it's a pretty clean sort of nature thing and I don't want to have too many images and things stamped over it so I'm not going to use anything else other than that just to keep it a nice even smooth finish with a nice clean style. I'm just going to stick those three down like that and if I decide when I'm actually coming to use them that I want to add something else then I can do that so that leaves me nice options there right 
You're probably wondering why I'm using this plastic bag to put glue on. Um, I find it really useful because I don't get too much on my fingers and I do get a nice even spread underneath. So there's my nice little stickers, my tickets that I've started off with then. Then I found this box that's got cloakroom tickets and I have a piece of old pastel paper that was just an off cut that I had and I'm just going to stick something on here. So let's do these two tickets and again this will just be the basics Oops, see, I'm going to need this gluing piece again this will be the basics so these I've got nice perforated edges I've already inked this up and I'm just going to glue them down I'm not going to do anything else other than glue these down because I don't know what I'm going to use it for and when the time comes for me to use this in some particular way I might decide then what I want to do further to this. So I'm going to just stick these pretty much in the center and let it be. Right, so that's one way. Then we always have those occasions where you're working on a project and sometimes you do things and you think, oh my gosh, I'm not really that keen on it now that I've completed it. And this was one of those tickets. I'd started off with a piece of card that was watercolour paper. I'd stuck down an image which was just one of the borders from Daphne's diary. I'd stamped a little bit on here, but I think I could have perhaps used a slightly lighter colour um, ink. I think the black is what's worrying me. Anyway, I have a solution to that. So, what we're going to do is we're going to start off by just taking some metallic white acrylic paint. And I'm just going to use a little bit of this on the end of my spatula. I'm really basically wanting just to soften this down so that I don't have such a, a strong colour on my surface. And I'm going to use the little palette knife just to make this as nice smooth surface. The kind of texture I'm looking for, the consistency is probably what corn flour would look like when it's been dissolved in water which is you know what they call that is slaking when you slake the corn flour so if you have a look at that you'll see it's a milky surface so I just want to make sure that I don't have any really large globs of paint and then I'm going to take a toothbrush and I'm just going to dip this in here I'm just going to use this as a bit of a screen and I'm just going to splatter this onto here and although it doesn't look terribly strong at this stage I'll show you the piece that I've done already and you'll see what I mean when I say it softens it so we're going to go from that to having that where you'll see once it dries you can see the little white splatters and when you put color on top of something it always pushes the other colors into the background so you can see that that is quite nicely subdued that and when this other section is dried it's going to look exactly the same. At this stage if you wanted to use watercolors or something on this just to add a bit more color you can. I have here used a bit of orange and green just tying up with the theme and now that I've subdued that black I'm actually quite happy with that. So I hope this has given you a few ideas. Hopefully you've learned something new and I look forward to joining you again quite soon. I've got so many things I want to share with you. Bye now.